time making biscuits. Get up in the middle of the noonday biscuits. Get up in the afternoon making biscuits. Get up in the middle of the nighttime biscuits. Get Welcome back. It's been a uh, busy week, but not as busy as producing five videos a week, I can tell you that. Um, I have been working on free plants for everyone, the good guide to propagation. And I would not be surprised if Jack Broccoli gets nominated for a Dragon Award. Thanks to all of you that wrote back and said, hey, we nominated it. Thank you very much. That will get it considered by the judges for a final award. It just kind of puts it on the radar. So thank you for that. I figured um, it's a Saturday. It's getting kind of late here. I've been filming some videos for PrepperAdvantage.com and uh, now I'm going to take you guys around and show you what's cooking in the garden and share a little bit of news with you. We put in some more tire gardens here and we put in some eggplant and tomatoes and a pepper and some celosia. We also have here a self-watering uh, container garden. David drilled some holes in the side about three inches up or so and then put some rotting uh, sticks wood chips things like that in the bottom and then some compost in the middle and then some potting soil on the top but you could he could have done all potting soil after the chips and then the chips went up to just past the uh, drainage holes he did he did three it was just before the drowning baby you know oh, uh, it's kind of like that. right That's about so there scary. right about there I, I don't even know how you would do that uh, I tried okay, once just, and I just let's just move it. I don't want to go. Okay, wanna, all right. No, there's no drowning baby on this me. bucket. Oh, uh, on this side there is a white baby and a snowstorm drowning actually. No, there isn't. It's oh. just shh, it's plastic. That's all it is. <laughs> Alright, so there's the there's the holes right there and you can yeah. see the, the bottom is all full of yes. rotten wood and then the top so, is potting soil. Potting soil. And then that right there is a cantaloupe. Yeah. And it'll just grow out of there and all over Right, it'll place. go vertical. Yeah. Just... yeah. But the idea here is that then, you know, he after he put the pot and soil in, and before he put the cantaloupe in here, he filled, filled it up with water, just poured water in here, till it started running out of the drainage holes here. And the idea is that we've got a reservoir of water in the, in the bottom that the uh, roots of the plant will reach down and draw from and also it just sort of also magically through capillary action will soak up into the soil and the drainage the overflow drainage holes are in case it rains and you and you don't want it to fill if you if these weren't here the whole thing could just be a big soppy mess and your cantaloupe would die and we wouldn't want that so hence the, the drainage overflow holes these are the Seminole pumpkins that David has saved the seeds from for a couple of years now, I think. And they just are doing so well. Look how beautiful, green, beautiful and green they are. And you saw how we planted these. They just, look how light, they like it. They love it. These are the blue Hubbards. You can see the difference. These are less, look less variegated. But still, look, they look beautiful, happy. They're just, they're going to do well. I think I can feel it. We put in this long bed the other day. Put in the tomatoes. Trying tomatoes yet again. I've never had a lot of luck with tomatoes in oh. tropical climates, the except comes for. Out. The secret. Yeah. <laughs> tomatoes in the tropics don't go together very well most of the time. If you're in Florida, plant the Everglades tomato. Oh, if I had some seeds for that, I would probably plant it, but are, yeah, they're you, either they look like a weed. And they're small. If you've never seen them, they're small, but they have such an amazing burst of flavor. They're a big, strong tomato flavor, and I think they're perennials, right, honey? They're close. If okay, they're not close. perennial, yeah, they're technically a perennial. Okay. And they, can, they, they could just keep carrying and vining and falling over. Weedy, and they self-seed and come means back. Which that they are hardy. They're just a fantastic... Plant them over the scrappy. septic tank and walk away. Yeah. And, and right away. Because they're going to do they're gonna do well. But we are going to try this again with tomatoes in the we tropics. Always try. And uh, the only time I really had luck with the bigger tomato varieties was in Tennessee when we were growing oh, them in oh. the clay. And I went dumpster diving at Kmart and pulled out a whole bunch of trays of tomatoes from the dumpster that they Church had just plants. they just thrown out the whole 
yeah. section of transplants. We're talking like three or four hundred plants easily. So we took a bunch to church. I gave a bunch to a farmer friend of mine, and then I took home like a hundred and planted them. We, did. we had so many. It was awesome. Grew. It was fantastic, and we, we, we. Oh man, we we took all the excess tomatoes that we didn't eat and we froze them and when we had bunches and bunches of them we cooked them down into sauce and we jarred the sauce and we had so, so many jars of sauce and that let me tell you that was the most delicious tomato sauce like ever yeah really. bar none it was we, fantastic i mean we almost cried when we used up the last jar so. rachel almost cried i, I was too oh, no, yeah no. I'm, uh, i like my food uh yeah so but it was, it was really 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 delicious and our other tomato bed that we intercropped right here and uh, Rachel planted the yellow wax beans this last week. The beans have come up in rows in between and they're looking very nice. This sandy bits here, this is seaweed that I gathered at the beach and threw in between to give a little extra nutrition to the bed. But you can see all these little beans coming up and looking really nice in between. They should be doing well but the rains have been evading us lately. We've been getting little patches here and there and it hasn't been all that great. We've got a little bit of turmeric coming up. Turmeric, turmeric, turmeric right there in the middle. And that's a weed. Look how cute it is. It gets the first one. Isn't it adorable? This is the lazy housewife beans. And this one is uh, rather precocious. It started early. You can see they're coming up the oh, here's another little one. trellises. Got a little one? Tiny little one. Red, red. My Look at that. Looks good. They're starting to make their way up the trellises here. And at the end this week, I planted this, which I believe is a Dioscoria bulbifera. It was popping out of one of my pots, and I think it's the edible one. I like a little bit of uncertainty in my life. It's exciting. That's looking, that's looking pretty good. I think we're gonna get some beans here. Look at my pepper bed right here. See that? Oh, it was too hot for even the peppers. What do I mean? I mean this. Look at that. Big brush pile here. And this guy came over and said he'd clear it for me. And uh, he did this trick, which I knew nothing about before. He said, all you gotta do when you have a big pile of brush is shove a tire under it and light it on fire. And I said, wow, that sounds like a permaculture trick. No, actually, that sounds like a trick from a different culture, and I'm not going to uh, put my cultural imperialistic views over anyone else or say that anything is more valid than anything else. So I said, that's beautiful. I don't know what all this stuff, I don't even know. I mean, was that in the tire? Did tires have, did tires have um, steel roses inside of them? I don't know. You know, it's like... Do tires have steel roses? Answer in the in the, the comments section. Here's another one. That's from the tire, it's gotta be. Anyhow, it's it's kind of horrifying, but we got rid of all this stuff. <laughs> I know that's evil. I, I won't leave that in my video. I don't want you guys to judge me. It's not gonna be in the final video, so yeah, we'll be fine. Nobody's gonna judge me for that. I didn't do it anyways. Unfortunately, something ate the bottom of the turnip. I came out here today and was like, wow, this thing's looking really brown, but this is like turned to sponge down at the bottom. So I think something ate the inside of it out, which is kind of sad. Though it may just be the heat of the fire. It might be dead, I don't know. I wasn't actually here when it got cleared. Look at all those tomatoes coming up. That's from where we dropped the slices. Solosia's looking good. Another tomato right there. Another tomato right there. And then we've got our eggplant another Celosia, and then we have Talonum fruticosum. And this bean back here is looking okay. But the surprising thing is, is I came over here today and I see that my rare edible Dioscoria bulbifera came up. I was so afraid this thing was gonna rot or not come up because the other one I planted died. This is coming up and it's looking strong. And hopefully it'll reach for the ladder, reach for the sky. This was all right here. Here's a little demonstration garden for mulching. This was all a big pile of brush. And the guy that came over just torched it all. Look at that. Just was a huge fire over here. Again, I didn't see it. I was in the middle of working on my book. 
and uh, he offered to clear and I just said do whatever you want so he cleared it and this whole area now is clear and we are clear mostly over here so I'm probably gonna put a couple beds in here and then uh, maybe just plant a lot of corn we're gonna do that planting corn in stations thing where we just hack some holes and plant corn I might throw in a few watermelons as well but I've got something bad to tell you guys maybe I'll just let Rachel tell you all because it's it's kind of bad and some of you guys predicted it so the bad news oh I, I should found okay the bad news is that we have just been alerted that we only have until December to continue using the lot here we thought that we would have a year maybe maybe two if we were lucky but it turns out that now the people that own it want to start building uh, in December so we only have like maybe five more months or so but we should be able to get a harvest at least some you know uh, but, and we're gonna keep we're gonna keep putting in beds and keep going for a little while longer of actual planting and then just maintaining for a while until December good news is that uh, uh, somebody else in the neighborhood told us that they used to work a piece of land in the neighborhood and uh, they're gonna connect us up with the man who owns that land and see if perhaps we can start working that piece of land uh, that would be very convenient if we can so we're gonna hope for that so that's a wrap up for this week you guys can see what we did and what's cooking and hopefully we get that other piece of land before the rainy season quits and uh, we can just keep pushing along it's hard not owning the land I, you know, I've owned land since I was 24 years old, so it's been a long time. And then, uh, you know, you move overseas, you just restart everything, and that's the way it goes. Glad to be here, glad to be near the beach, and I'm glad for the use of the land for a time. We got to do a bunch of demonstrations, got to do a bunch of videos, and we've got five more months, so that's good for some stuff, but it's kind of a bummer, man. I'm like a long-term food forest planter type. So, at this point, I should probably set up a GoFundMe page. Help David's food forest. You know, help, uh, help a large hungry family in the third world right now. Help the underprivileged. Anyhow, no, I, I don't know. Uh, but you can support me on Patreon. I did set up <laughs> Patreon. Yeah, go ahead and support me on Patreon. Uh, some of you guys actually did. You jumped in. I've got like 88 bucks a month. So thank you very that much was for that. Very kind. That's awesome. That's awesome. I appreciate it. Uh, and I'm gonna try and put more um, video content. I thought, you know, I've got some videos, I've got books, I've got booklets that I've written. I'll put some of that stuff that I normally sell up there for anybody that uh, is is deciding to become a patron. So yes, awesome, sign up and do that. And uh, I'll try to make it worthwhile for you if you enjoy the videos and that sort of thing. I would do more videos if it actually made um, some financial sense. And there's a lot of you guys out there now that appreciate the videos, so, you know, that's great. And uh, if you want to throw in a couple of bucks, go ahead and do it, that's cool. Um, and if you don't, that's fine. I'm not gonna quit doing videos. Um, just because like my whole world is falling apart because I'm so poor and I don't own any land. You know, we're eating cockroaches. Not me. Yeah, actually we ate snails for lunch. We had a, a conch chowder well, that was really was good. Conch. This but guy just delivered it. Different, right? Conch, yeah, a conch is a snail. It's, well, it's technically a snail, but you don't know it because you call it conch so that you don't have to know that you're eating snail, right? I'm actually part French. Okay. If it made sense, I would just go ahead and uh, and make more videos, but a lot of time involved, and I am getting my writing done this last week. And hopefully we'll get that other piece of land. We'll be over there, we'll do some demonstrations, and it's a lot more clear than this one. It's, it's like, it's ready to just be, um, have the weeds cut down and be planted. So, you know, that'll work out. And I've still got time to put some corn in over here and I'll join you all next week and I'll try to do some more of those little short videos on the phone now and again when I see something cool and just pop post it up that doesn't take me hardly any time and I can still share with you guys and maybe if I get really fancy I'll go live at some point Ooh. yeah that would be fun wouldn't it answer some questions thanks for joining me and until next time may your thumbs always be green I went to see David David the good Listen to Portis Head and drink spiced rum. He threw me off the ramp and broke my foot and broke.
broke my wheelchair all in good fun This guy came over and said he'd clear it for me, and uh, he did this trick. 